second Sunday after Pentecost, we'll be here again in St. Mary's, and also the Feast of St. Raphael the Archangel. <clears throat> the Epistle for the 24th Sunday after Pentecost, taken from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 1. Brethren, we are confident in the Lord Jesus, that he who hath begun a good work in you will perfect it unto the day of Christ Jesus. As it is meet for me to think this for you all, for that I have you, have you in my heart and that in my bands, and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers of my joy. For God is my witness, how I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray that your charity may more and more abound in knowledge and all in all understanding, that you may approve the better things, that you may be sincere and without offense unto the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of justice through Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. In the Gospel, taking that according to St. Matthew, chapter 22. At that time the Pharisees went and consulted among themselves how to ensnare Jesus in his speech. And they said to him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art a true speaker, and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou dost not regard the person of men. Tell us therefore what dost thou think? Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their wickedness, said, Why do you tempt me, ye hypocrites? Show me the corner of the tribute, and they offered him a penny. And Jesus said to them, Whose image and superscription is this? They say to him, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Render therefore to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Thus were the words of today's Holy Gospel. Give me, Father, the Son of Amen. So today, the Feast of St. Raphael, Raphael the Archangel. A few considerations on the perspective of our battlefield and the work of the angels. A little catechism on the angels. The angels are very much a part of this creation. St. Raphael may have been one of the powers or an archangel. There are seven angels that stand around this, the, the throne of God. And one of them, of course, the greatest of them is St. Michael, who was an archangel. And then the other six angels, and then uh, and so we don't know the choirs of each of these angels, but St. Raphael may have been a power. And today a consideration of the role of the angels in the battlefield. First of all, remember that God created one world. There's only one world, only one universe. And angels are a part of this universe. They're a part of this world. And they are the perfection of, the, of this universe, that God created, even when he created the creatures, as St. Thomas Aquinas says, he could not make an infinite number of creatures. I mean, any creature infinitely good, but he made an infinite number of good creatures, each one showing a different aspect of his magnificence. And billions and billions and billions of these creatures we call by one name. We call them angels, which means messengers. But there are, in fact, many billions types of angels, and they fit in nine different categories. Nine different genera, nine different, nine different kinds of things. Like, for instance, the cherubim, they would be like mammals. And then the seraphim would, would be like uh, fishes. And so that there would be different, different genera. And so each cherubim, each of the cherubim would be like having a, a, like the mammals, a dog, a cat. There's only one dog, only one cat, only one of each species amongst the angels because they don't have bodies. So not having bodies, they want to be differentiated by their species. So there's a genus, like mammal, amongst our creatures, or uh, fishes, or bir uh, birds, and, there, and amongst, the, amongst the angels, there are nine different genera, nine different kinds of, of genuses, and these nine, nine genuses we call choirs. Amongst the choirs, there are millions and millions and millions and millions, in fact billions, of angels, individual angels, that belong to each choir. They have the principal characteristics of that choir, but each one is individually very different from every other one. There are not two of any type of angel. And so these angels are billions and billions of different creatures that are immaterial. They don't have bodies. 
They have, a, but they are part of the entire universe. Even the universe, even the physical universe, what makes a dog real, what makes a dog alive, is his spirit or his immateriality. The dog breathes, the dog, the dog eats, the dog barks, the dog has emotions and passions. The dog has these things, and each of these things are not part of the body of the dog, but they're the soul of the dog. Same with a plant. It has a lesser soul than that of a dog, but it has life, like a dog, but it cannot self-move, it does not have passions, it doesn't have feelings, but it does grow. And so each of these things are alive, but they have a different kind of life. And so amongst the, the angels are the highest of all immaterial creatures. We human, Every single creature has immateriality in it. Every creature has a, an essence, a nature, and a form. Every creature is something. Whatever you can say a noun, whatever you can apply a noun to is immaterial. It's the dog, cat, house, rock. Everything that makes, what makes a house a house is immaterial. What makes a rock a rock is immaterial. And angels are simply pure immaterial, and therefore they are freed from the inhib inhibitions, from the, the things that inhibit, from bodies inhibit and limit us. Bodies limit us to space, they limit us our capacities, and these limitations are not found amongst the angels, and yet they all have different parts to play. And remember that angels are not creatures that with Satan live in hell, and with God live in heaven. These creatures are part of this fabric of the universe. They are working in the universe. They, they push the stars around, they work, they work with the plants, they work with the animals, they work with men, they work in the very presence of God. And hence we find in sacred scripture, throughout scripture, listed nine different kinds of angels. And the nine choirs come from the angel, from sacred scripture. And these nine choirs, says, they say the saints, is divided into three different hierarchies. The first hierarchy of the angels, the top three, they are in the presence of God and they see God face to face and they work only on the glory of God. They are dedicated only to the house of God. They are like the servants of the king who have only the responsibility to feed the king, to, to take care of the king in every single manner, to, take, to make sure that he is glorified, to make sure his court is always full, to make sure he's always taken care of in every way. And their only duty is the king. And these are the highest three of the angels, which are the cherubim, the seraphim, the cherubim, and the thrones. The highest three hierarchy. The next three are dedicated to the rule of all the universe, but especially the rule of men. And this is like the hierarchy of the commanders and generals in the army. These are the ones that have the mastery over the, the, the mastery from on high of the ruling between God and man. That God made these creatures called men, which he gave a free will. And he made a universe which has an order in it. And in these three hierarchies are the works of the angels of the <coughs> middle hierarchy. They are the general watching over all of the elements of the universe. And the lowest three of the hierarchy, of which the bottom are the guardian angels, these three are working on individual groups of men in their locations and in their groups. And that they are all part of the army of God. Now of these angels, one third fell into the kingdom of hell. Because it says in one of the books of the Old Testament, one of the minor prophets, he says a third of heaven fell. That when there was a war in heaven, St. Michael fought against Lucifer, and two thirds of the angels followed behind St. Michael, and one third followed Lucifer and went into hell. So one third of the angels fell into hell, and two thirds remained with St. Michael in heaven. So the number of the absolute number of the just, that is those souls that are pleasing to God, the absolute number of, of creatures that please God, rational creatures that please God, will always outnumber the absolute number of rational creatures that turned away from God. So that the angels already far outnumber the devils. There are, there are at least two good angels for every one devil. And that these and that so and then and there are many angels, when we consider the guardian angels, there's at least one guardian angel of every human being. And there are 7 billion uh, angels on the world, to, to, and 7 billion people on earth today, maybe 20 billion that have been since the beginning of time. And there are at least one guardian angel for each one of those. That's 20 billion guardian angels. And there'll be more than that of the guardian angels. But then above them, there'll be more of the angels above them. So there are billions and billions and billions and billions of angels. And, that they, and these are considering two-thirds of the angels that went into heaven. And one third fell down into hell. And so there are billions of, of good angels and there are billions of wicked angels. 
But the good angels number twice the number of the, of, of the bad angels. And that these angels work in our battlefield. They have a war, they have a part to play. They also tell us, well, well each of the, the elements of the seven angels must be inside of us. So the highest of the angels, says Jacobus of Rajane, he says, the highest of the angels equals the seraphim. Because they are devoted to the most important thing that God is. And St. John tells us, Deus caritas est. God is charity, God is love. And therefore the highest of the angels are devoted to love. And they have simply the highest and most ardent love of God. And these are the seraphim. And also there is a tradition of the small t, it's not a dogma of our faith, but it is a pious belief of many saints that the seraphim, not one of the seraphim fell. That from every one of the eight choirs, some angels fell and went to hell. And but for the but for the choir of the seraphim, not one angel fell. And this is the, the, the choir of the, the highest choir that is devoted to the ardent love of God. And of course, it's not a dogma of faith, it's a pious belief of some saints. But nonetheless, the seraphim who have this perfect love of God and the highest love of God, they were creatures made for love. Remember that our, our mind, our soul, is made to know and to love. It's made to know and to love, and thirdly, to guide the lower things in serving. That's why we say, God made me to know Him, love Him, and serve Him in this world, that I might be happy with Him in the next. And so that the knowing and the loving and the serving are three things that we do that irrational creatures must do. And that the, the love is that which the seraphim do. They simply sit in the presence of God, and they pour their highest and deepest love upon Him at all times. And then the next thing to say to the saints that is required is perfect knowledge. Ardent love and perfect knowledge. And the perfect knowledge is that of the cherubim. And Lucifer is believed to be of the, of the choir of the cherubim. And then Lucifer was the highest of the angels, but he, and he was a cherubim. He had a special place above all the other angels because he had the most perfect knowledge. And so that there's a special, uh, a special place of, of, of Lucifer on the top of all the angels because of the perfect knowledge of God. But he turned to pride, and from his pride he committed the sin of, the, of disobedience to God. The known Seraphim was cast into hell. But the other cherubim, the ones who have the perfect knowledge of God and are devoted to simply understanding and knowing Him. And then the third are the thrones. And the throne is also a reminder of a very important part of the supernatural life. Because as St. Thomas Aquinas tells us, the Father of the Church, Jehovah says, if you love and you know, you sit upon a throne. When you love and you know, you sit and rest. For rest is one of the most important things that God does. And a ruler, when he rules, he always rules from a place of rest. He is sitting on a throne. And hence the third level of the angels, first of all the cherubim, the seraphim, secondly the cherubim, and thirdly the thrones, who simply rest in the comprehension and enjoyment and contemplation of God. Here is an choir of angels simply dedicated to rejoicing and enjoying the presence of God. Duns Scotus was a theologian at the time of St. Thomas Aquinas, and he taught that enjoyment was a principal activity in heaven. And St. Thomas Aquinas says, no, enjoyment is not an activity. Enjoyment is the result of an activity that when you know and when you love, and when you know and you possess, then enjoyment comes from that knowledge, comes from that possession. We see that, for instance, in when one laughs at a joke. Someone tells a story, and the, and the story uh, takes a twist at the end, and you understand and you comprehend the twist. And when you understand and comprehend the twist, you have an enjoyment, and therefore you laugh. And so the enjoyment comes from after the understanding, after the comprehension. And that remember for rational creatures, love and understanding is what's necessary for us to experience enjoyment. And the third level of the angels, it was the thrones who simply rest in the enjoyment of God. All they do is rest in the presence of God, rejoice in the presence of God, and that's all they do for all eternity. And these are the top three choirs devoted only to God. And then the next three choirs are devoted to the work of man and to, the, to ruling men in general, for there is an order amongst the angels. Now this order also exists in hell, except that now in hell the order is inverted and perverted to the exact opposite. 
There is no love in hell. The seraphim are only in heaven. So love is completely absent in hell. However, the other duties and responsibilities are fulfilled in hell. The knowledge by which the cherubim, uh, of the cherubim uh, are, are obedient perfectly to the commands and understandings and preachings of the Satan. And he tells them and explains his plans and his ways. And they discuss their plans and how to destroy the kingdom of God as much as they can. And these are the works of the demonic cherubim. But the cherubim in, in heaven simply know not a rest and the knowledge of God. And the resting, of course, is done by the thrones. But the next three levels are the dominations, the middle level. And the dominations are like the commanders in the army who tell the other angels what to do. Like Jacobus points out, that one angel said to another in the, in the book of Daniel, Run and tell the angel of Jerusalem to do this. So one angel came down from heaven and he spoke to another angel and he said to him, Run to Jerusalem and tell the angel of Jerusalem such and such. So that we know amongst the angels, there is a hierarchy and structure of angels by which one angel tells another angel what to do. There is a communication amongst the angels. The knowledge of the angels is overflowing from the knowledge of the cherubim, which drops down into them and their knowledge of God. The love of the angels overflows to the angels' love of the seraphim and drops down to them so they are able to have a deep love of God. The rest and enjoyment of God drops down to the angels from the thrones. And the dominations, they are the practical soldiers, the beginning of the practical soldiers who work in the battlefield. And they give orders to the other angels what to do. So there's a perfect harmony and a perfect structure in the kingdom of heaven. And there are billions and billions of these angels fulfilling the commands of God. They are telling the other angels what works they must do. The angels that dominate the other angels, the dominations. And then secondly, there are two works to be done. There is the work that is impossible, the work that is difficult, and then there is, the, and there is the work of defending against the devils and restraining the devils. And the work that is impossible or difficult, which is the work of miracles, and the work of miracles of grace plus regular miracles, these are the work of the virtues. The word virtue means power, strength. And so the virtue, the virtues, the virtues, they are the ones who fulfill the miracles. So that when, when there is a, a, a fire that led the Jews to the desert was the angel that was a virtue. And the cloud that protected them was done by an angel that was a virtue. And that the virtues protect and defend. And most likely that they had the dog that protected as Saint uh, John Bosco was a virtue that was there to protect the Saint John Bosco against the attacks of the devil. The, 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 the virtues or excuse me, those are the, 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 the powers. No, but the, 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 that, that's later. But the, the, virtues, the virtues are the ones who do the, the, the works of miracles, and the powers are the ones that protect. So the, the powers, like the angel, the, the, the dog that protected St. John Bosco, and the ones that restrained the angels. And Raphael may have been a power, because it says in the book of Tobias that St. Raphael took the devil, and he brought him out into a desert of Egypt, and he bound and constrained him and tied him up. So that the powers, the powers are the ones who defend against the attacks of the devils. Devils are always attacking us, and devils are restrained. And the powers are more powerful than all the devils. So that when the devils come to attack us, the powers hold back them. And remember, all these actions are real. Because at this very moment, Satan wants to destroy all the human race. At this moment, he wants to destroy everything that there is. And the powers are constantly restraining the devils. Meanwhile, the virtues are, are, are implementing the miraculous works of the grace of God and performing as a miracles. And these are the three middle hierarchies. And then finally, the lowest hierarchy, the principalities, the archangels, and the angels. And these are called the lowest hierarchy, says Jacobus, because they only have a limited sphere of control. First, the principalities. These are the angels of nations and the angels of people. There's an angel in charge of the Americans, an angel in charge of the United States, an angel in charge of Kansas, an angel in charge of regions. And indeed, these angels are the, are the principalities, who are like princes in each place. Daniel also speaks about the principalities, for there was once an argument in heaven at the time of the book of Daniel, where the prince of Egypt was arguing against the prince of Israel. Now, the prince of Israel was not a principality. The prince of Israel was St. Michael himself. The highest of the angels, not in his nature, but in his position because of his winning the battle against the, against the devil. And the principalities, 
well, the, the prince of, 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 of Israel was St. Michael, and the prince of the whole Catholic Church is also St. Michael, taken after Israel ceased to be the true religion. And the prince of, of Israel and the prince of, 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 of Persia were arguing with one another. They wanted the word of God want his blessings. And so the princes of the angels, the principalities, are the ones that rule over the various regions. And then, and then secondly, the archangels, and then lastly, the angels. And the archangels and angels went wrong now, the lowest part of the hierarchy, because the archangels, the archangels are the, have the duty to carry messages for whole peoples. The archangel, the archangel Gabriel, and the archangel Saint Michael. Saint Michael's an archangel, and Gabriel an archangel. Gabriel the archangel carried the message from heaven, and he carried the message down to uh, the, the Blessed Virgin Mary, which is a message for all mankind. The archangels carry messages for the for whole groups of people and for the whole of mankind. And also, they protect multitudes. So that, for instance, they're like the sergeant major protecting a group of people and have angels under them. And then the angels are the lowest of the nine choirs of angels. And these are the angels who are limited in their ability to protect only one man. And hence, there's a, each one of us has a guardian angel. Now, the nine choirs of angels at the top are the seraphim, and the cherubim and the thrones who are devoted to the life, to the worship of God. And then the dominations, the, the virtues and the powers who are in the general middle area of rule that are fighting against the attacks of devils, helping miracles to be performed, and the dominations are directing all of these angels and doing their work. And then the lowest are the principalities, which are the angels that direct an entire region. The principalities direct the chief principality of the United States. There's an angel in charge of the United States. He guides all the other angels in this region. And then other principalities gather, gather smaller regions. And the smallest regions, instead of cities, are guarded by archangels. And individual small groups are guarded by archangels. And then the angels themselves, who are working at the lowest level, guarding man. And angel, we call all of the nine choirs angels because each one of them are messengers between God and man. Each one of them are messengers between the heavens and this earth. And they're all working in this earth. And we also remember that the angels are always doing their work. And the guardian angels, when the time of death comes, the guardian angel will record before God all that is good that we have done. But the guardian angel will also record all that is evil that we have done. When the time of death comes, and those die in the state of grace, who dies in the state of grace, the guardian angel, and also maybe other angels present, because archangels are involved, principalities are involved. In fact, all the, all of the six lower choirs are involved in working out our salvation. And there may be multiple angels present at our judgment. And those that, that and when the time of judgment comes, these good angels will point out that our repentance from sin and, 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 and the reason why we should be allowed mercifully to enter into heaven after passing most of us through purgatory. However, when the angel, when a person dies in the state of mortal sin, then the bad angel who is attacking us and pointing out all of our wickedness, he will be the only time in which the two angels agree. The angels of heaven and the angels of hell are always fighting against each other. They're always opposed, except at the moment of death and judgment. At the moment of death and judgment, they will not be opposed. So that when, if they will not be opposed in the case of the damned. They will be opposed in the case of the just. But when the damned die, the, 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 the evil devil, the guardian devil in charge of, of our soul, and the other devils involved in our, in, our, in our helping us towards damnation, they will curse and they will point out every real evil that we have done and every real thing we've done to avoid following the inspirations of grace. Then the good angel will agree with the bad angel. Only he will be more angry and more violent than the bad angel. Because when the just one turns to violence, he is infinitely more violent than the unjust. That's why when the powers who are just angels, when they restrain a devil, they have so much more power and so much more strength, so much more viciousness in battle than any devil can have. So likewise, when the time of death comes, both Satan and his devils, as well as St. Michael and all the angels, shall be gathered together against the damned soul. And there shall be a, a, a court, just like in our court, there are multiple, there are, there are the 12 men of the jury, there are witnesses of our judgment. These first witnesses will be only the angels. At the end of the world, 
the witnesses shall be added, all men on earth. And there shall not be a disagreement in the angels in their judgment of our souls. But remember that angels are a very important part of our battlefield, and that they're a very important part of the work that we do, as, as we're able to do as Catholics, and they do really protect us. And we should speak of our guardian angel, call upon the protection of the angels as we go through the battlefield of life, and not forget the angels. The Lucifer makes sure he's not forgotten. He's in all the movies. He's in a lot of all, and he shows his wickedness and all the symbolism of Satanism. Notice the Satanists always respect the demonic angels. The Satanists never forget the demonic angels. They call upon the satanic angels to help them. They call upon the angels to help them to do their wicked works. The Satan will not allow his followers to forget the wicked angels. However, the just man, those who follow God, these often forget their angels. It's one of the examples that our Lord Jesus, one of the reasons why our Lord Jesus Christ said that the children of darkness are wiser than the children of light. Because the children of darkness know what they want, and they do whatever it takes to get what they want. They're always on the move to get what they want, and they know what they want. Whereas the children of light know what they want, but they don't work to attain salvation. They don't work to eradicate sin. They don't call upon the helps that God gives us. And the help, one of the principal helps that God gives us equals the trillions and trillions of angels that are all around us, that we must call upon their help and have confidence in their assistance. They will help us to get to the kingdom of heaven. And remember that one power and one angel and one archangel is sufficient to defeat all of the wicked angels. The lowest angel in heaven is more powerful than the highest angel in hell, which happens to be Satan. When we see things in perspective, remember that Satan fell. He was the highest of all the angels. He fell. There are trillions and trillions of angels below him. And he fell to be below the lowest one. The highest to the lowest of the angels and the weakest of the angels in heaven by himself can take Satan and destroy him. He who was once the highest fell the lowest. And remember that Satan can only rule over those who fell beneath him. And these he rules in hell. But not one soul in the state of grace and not one of angel, of the angels is below Lucifer. A saint has power over Lucifer. And one of the great powers of the priesthood, he drives out Satan. And remember the guard of driving out of Satan. And as a priest does not need to be a priest to drive out Satan. It's the third of the minor orders. There are seven orders of priesthood. The lowest is Porter, the doorkeeper. He opens and closes the door to the people in the Mass. The second lowest equals the lector. He reads the Old Testament and he teaches catechism. And the third lowest is the exorcist, who has the low task of throwing out the devil. To put it into perspective, the task of throwing out the devil and the task of doing this work is equivalent to the guy that cleans up the trash on the work site. So on any work site, there are constructors. Then there's a guy who's the pilot. The first job in construction is pilot. Pilot here and pilot there. The guy that piles stuff here, piles stuff there, sweeps up the work site and throws out the garbage. That is what is required to, build, to, to throw out devils. The highest of the devils is to, for the other angels and for anyone sold in the state of grace to be cast out is just like sweeping up and picking up the trash on a work site. It's not very difficult and it's a very lowly task. Hence on the journey to priesthood, there are eight steps. The eighth step being episcopacy. And the third step at the very bottom, the third of the four minor orders is exorcist, the power to cast out devils. We also find amongst the saints that every saint had the power to drive away devils. Every single saint could drive out the devils. Every saint combated the devils, including the lowest saint, and every saint defeated the devils. And every single soul that goes to heaven, the one that barely sinks into heaven by repenting at the last moment, he defeats the devil. And so we will discover when we go to heaven that defeating the devil is one of the easiest things to do and one of our smallest tasks. It is not our great battle. One of the great errors of today, for instance, is that we have to, destroy, we have to wipe out all the bad guys and everything will be fine. What happens if you do remove Joe Biden? What happens if you do remove the communist leaders and you remove all the bad guys? Will the world become better? No, it won't. And why not? Because we haven't changed from sinners into saints. Because we haven't changed our lives. 
because we haven't decided to know, love, and serve God above all things. And therefore, removing all the wicked ones doesn't fix anything. However, if you're building the kingdom of Christ, if you're trying to know, love, and serve God, on the way, you must eradicate devils. It's one of the things you have to do. You have to clean out the trash. You have to clean out the trash and throw out the rubbish. That's one of the activities. But there's no reason to throw out rubbish, to level a piece of ground, to cut down trees, if you're not going to build something. Then all that will happen is the trees will come back, the dirt will come back, the rain will come back. It is completely useless. And our Lord pointed this out also in one of his parables when he said that there was a devil. And the devil was living inside of a man. And the devil was cast out. The easy work of an exorcist. Many people love to have exorcisms. We should not have too many exorcisms. Every time you go to confession, you receive an exorcism. That's one of the past signs. Now casting out the devil. That's done before the sign of the cross is completed. The devil is cast out. And then the more important thing, the essential thing is cast out, which is sin inside of your soul. That's what must be cast out. The devil is wiped away easily. And so that, the, what, what, what is the problem? A man was possessed of the devil, and the devil was cast out. The parable of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The devil went to find a place to rest, and not find any, he returned to the house where he was. Finding it clean and empty, what did he do? He left and got seven devils more wicked than himself. And the eight devils came and dwelt there. And the last state of that man was worse than the first. Now why do those eight devils come in? The reason is because after the Satan was cast out, the house remained empty. It was not filled with the knowledge of God. It was not filled with the love of God. It was not filled with the, with the service of God. It wasn't filled with doing our duties and living out our life as we're supposed to. It was left empty. Just trying to stay out of sin. I don't want to be a drunk anymore. I don't want to be a murderer anymore. I don't want to kill anybody anymore. I don't want to be impure anymore. I don't want to lie anymore. Okay, suppose you stop doing all those things. Then what? Then what? You do not remain clean and empty. We must build the kingdom of Christ. We must spread the kingdom of Christ in our minds, our hearts, and our neighbors. Now, the house is left clean and empty. The devil returns. He does not go into the house because he knows when he goes against seven more wicked devils, the house will still be clean and empty. He's not worried. He gets the seven more wicked devils and the eight of them dwell there. Hence, we are to remember that one of the deceits of the devil is that our principal fight is against the devil. That's one of his lies. It is not our principal fight against the devil. Our principal fight is against vice. No devil can commit a single sin. They already committed their sin and they're already in hell. They cannot commit another sin. But we can commit sins and we can turn against God and we can reject God and we can refuse to do our work that we're required to do on this earth. This is where the trouble is. And if man turns away from sin and man calls upon the help of the good angels, then the bad angels, the wicked ones, can do nothing. It is true that St. Paul says, remember, you're fighting against principalities and powers and the lords of this darkness. Principalities are the Satans that rule regions. Powers are the Satans, that, the, the devils that fight against the good angels. You are fighting against principalities and powers and the lords of this darkness. That is to remind us that we human beings do not have the strength to fight against the weakest devil. Just like the strongest devil, the strongest devil is destroyed by the weakest angel. So any man that stands without grace, any man that stands without the help of the angels, any man that doesn't have the love of God in his heart and the knowledge of God in his mind cannot defeat any devil. We can defeat every devil if we have the knowledge of God and love of God in our hearts. Hence, when modernism hit this world 100 years ago in a very big way, 115 years ago in a very big way, St. Pius X said, this is the greatest evil of our time. How is it going to be defeated? It's going to be defeated by the knowledge and love of God. We must know God by our catechisms. We must love God and demonstrate it by the love of the Holy Sacraments, especially the Holy Eucharist and Confession. And with this knowledge and love of God, we will drive out modernism. So we can't just want to drive out modernism and the devil, but we must build the kingdom of Christ. But in any case, there are nine choirs of angels. 
Three, surrounding God's throne, devoted only to his glory. Three, in the middle, directing things in between those over the glory of God and the lower angels that work on the, taking care of this world. And the final three, the lowest three, rule certain regions on this earth and then individuals on this earth and carry messages from heaven to this earth. And each of them, all these angels are working now for our salvation and we call upon their help and honor them and love them and don't follow the foolish example I mean, uh, and, and the, uh, the, do not follow the foolishness of the devil or believe too much in the power of the devil, but rather the power of the good angels. Of course, I bless you all. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.